Well, good morning, everyone. I'm here to kick off what you've been coming here to see, the uh, contract uh, capabilities, opportunities that DISA has for this coming fiscal year. Um, I'm also between you and lunch, so we'll keep mindful of that. But um, first I'll talk about some of the, uh, the oops, see, I can't even control a clicker. Uh, I'll talk about the, the structure of the Development and Business Center. As you can see there, um, this actually is a little bit off because Mr. Montemorano talked about Steve Wallace being uh, promoted to our ST. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with STs, they are a, a senior executive equivalent, so basically SES level, and, and so you'll see down there the innovations office is headed up by Steve. So. The, the chart at the top shows he's a technical director. Right now, he, uh, he has one foot in each camp. He's helping me out with the technical director. But the innovations office actually will perform the, the role of innovation as well as being the overall technical leader of the development and business center. So on the chart, you'll see uh, we have several offices within DBC. Uh, many of those also have contracting opportunities. In fact, I'll talk about a couple of them. First, we have the Mission Partner Engagement Office. That it does have a uh, contracting opportunity I'll, I'll get to in a couple of minutes. Uh, that is headed by uh, Colonel Keith Chin, and that is our focal point, our belly button, basically, for all of our mission partners, uh, both internally and externally for this. Uh, they, they are provide the uh, liaison role between the mission partner and DISA and our capabilities gathering requirements. So as they gather the requirements, they hand them off to the requirements and analysis office headed by uh, Dr. Chip Hamilton. Uh, they perform all the analysis, they, they gather the requirements that MPEO has passed on to them, and they determine whether this is something that DISA can do or should do for uh, the mission partner. Sometimes we, it's just with the, beyond the capability of, that we have currently, and so we have to sometimes turn down requests, but in the most part, we can fulfill those and take on new initiatives. Strategic Communication Office, headed by Cindy Yor, uh, they are primarily responsible for putting together this event, along with PSD's folks. Uh, they have done a uh, lion's share of pulling together this event. They also are, are uh, as it says, strategic communications, so they, they perform all of the roles of the PAO for DISA, uh, as well as those of you who may attend the, um, the, the DISA Cybersecurity uh, Summit that is held in the spring. Uh, they're responsible for pulling that together. Uh, architecture Standards and Engineering Office. This is a, a fairly new office by name. It's headed up by Mike Southard. Um, it is really a combination of our electronic engineering uh, firm within DISA, uh, a portion of that, and the old CTO office. It, they've been cleaved together uh, to form that office and do internally um, um, efforts for DISA, as well as uh, I'll talk about a, um, a contracting opportunity they have in support of the DOD. Uh, the last uh, of the offices, but actually um, that the ink isn't dry on that. This is actually a directorate within, um, within my organization, my center, that's headed up by Steve Wallace. It's, uh, so the innovation directorate, um, and again, because it is led by a senior executive. Then we move on to the actual directorates within uh, DBC. And we will have um, Ms. Lisa Belt come up and talk about all of the uh, potential contracting opportunities that she has in the cyber directorate. Lisa, as you can see, is the acting director for this group. Uh, those of you who may recall John Hickey, um, John was the SES for this group, and he uh, moved on to other things uh, in February. And so very thankful for Lisa stepping in and, and John's uh, vacancy. Okay, Dr. Brian Herman is uh, now the acting 
director of the uh, services development uh, directorate. Brian was just selected internally by a rotational assignment last week to head up this group and we're very pleased to have Brian uh, fill that role. Again, Brian will come up and talk about what's available for contracting coming up uh, in a little bit. Captain Sean Roberts, he's the new commander of the Joint Interoperability Test uh, Command, both Fort Huachuca, that's where the headquarters are, as well as uh, the lab capabilities of JIDIC at Fort Meade. Uh, Captain Roberts um, heads up the, the joint, uh, as, as it states, the uh, JIDIC um, organization. And Mr. Monterano talked about the uh, NBIS, or the National Background Investigation System. Terry Carpenter is ahead of that. Uh, eventually, by the end of this fiscal year, uh, that will trans transition over to DSS. Uh, DBC performs uh, administrative control for all of the activities that uh, Terry carries out. So we do the care and feeding for them. Mr. Montemarano does program direction. And you can see um, you know, the, the, the strength that we have for the military and civilian uh, workforce. These are some of the areas, and again, Brian and Lisa will get into uh, a lot of the capabilities. And one thing, let me, let me pause for a second. Actually, after Brian and Lisa speak, uh, Jake Marcellus will also come up and talk a bit more about mobility. Uh, Jake's mobility uh, group is within Lisa's uh, cyber directorate. But here it shows uh, the, some of the major areas, and you'll uh, see that they do align quite well with what Mr. Deasy talked about this morning with uh, C2 and his discussion about C3, cybersecurity, um, as well as uh, we talked, Mr. Montemarano talked about the business systems capabilities and the, the more concerted focus that DISA has taken on, not only internally with business systems, but we're looking also at enter enterprise opportunities as we, as we uh, pull things together more. As well as IT testing, again, JIDIC is a, a big part of that. There's a reference to JIDIC first strategy. Uh, this is something we have currently started to embrace within DISA, uh, both with General Lynn and now Admiral Norton, signing out uh, direction that all programs within DISA that need test capabilities first goes to JIDIC to understand their capabilities. Can they fulfill the, that role for the, our development program? And if for some reason JIDIC is not able to fulfill that role, it's something unique beyond uh, JIDIC's capabilities, then we'll go outside and look for other capabilities. But uh, uh, that's, that's the, where we're going with that. Some of the other areas that we focus on, uh, software-defined enterprise. This is uh, something that we have just uh, pulled together a, a, an overarching structure and, and we're, we're moving forward with SDE uh, considerably within um, uh, the DBC. Shared identity, I, I believe there was some discussion earlier this morning about a shared identity. That is actually part of uh, Mr. Wallace's group that um, the way that that group is going to operate, as Mr. Montemarano mentioned, it's going to be basically lean and mean. We're going to look for innovations that are, that have very promising, um, quick outcomes, and we're going to focus a, a, a lot on those, that area. And if it looks like we can't have something positive come out of that in a short period of time, a year to 18 months, uh, we'll jettison it and, uh, and move on and find another initiative. Or if it looks like it's being promising, and obviously that's the hope of, the, of when we go into any of these, uh, we, will, we will look for a program within DISA um, to transition this over. Uh, and that's what we have done with Assured Identity as well as um, uh, uh, browser isolation capabilities. We, we, will, we will take those programs give them to a PMO and have them uh, institutionalize that, whether it's a DISA capability or an enterprise capability. Um, 
talked a bit about DevSecOps, actually agile development. Um, that's one thing that we're really focusing on, both in Brian Herman's area, he, he talked a little bit about that with, uh, with the Geeks JE, as the Admiral talked about this morning, that is going to be a DevSecOps agile development capability. Uh, Enbis is doing the same type of thing. So that is really something that uh, is getting more and more focus within DOD and uh, DIS had actually stepped out and, and uh, implemented some of those capabilities already. And that, that comes with some challenges and we're working collaboratively with JIDIC for testing. How do you test agile development and make sure it's done properly? As well as within the risk management framework where uh, Roger Greenwell is, is helping considerably in how we make sure that we can not slow down progress, but make sure we have uh, cybersecurity uh, part of the whole uh, uh, paradigm. So specifically, I mentioned that there are a couple of opportunities. These are opportunities that are outside the directorates that I mentioned, either cybersecurity or um, the uh, services development. So these are unique to the offices. The first one is in Mike Southard's area, the engineering group that I mentioned. And this has to do with, it, GINTAC is the acronym and the pronunciation of the acronym, but it is, it's really focusing on standards, both NATO standards as well as uh, US standards and uh, the uh, capabilities for data links. So Mike's group, is responsible for those types of standards within DOD. He makes sure that they, they are up to date and, and uh, follow the, the new flow of how DOD is proceeding and in this particular area it happens to be data links. So as you can see uh, right now, we are, uh, it is slated for a single award and a full and open competition. You can see when the uh, RFQ is gonna be put out. The other one is in our MPEO, our Mission Partner Engagement Office. Uh, this is a, a support contract uh, for that, those capabilities. Um, right now, we are looking at a uh, small business set aside for that effort. Um, and again, uh, same time frame, RFQ, first quarter of FY19. So you should be seeing that fairly soon, seeing we're right in the middle of uh, F first quarter. And you can see in both of these uh, capabilities when we plan to award. At least that's our, our best guess at this point. Okay, that concludes my portion. Before I turn it over to Dr. Herman, he can tell you about the services development directorate. Uh, I'll open it up for any questions that may have arisen. Mr. Timmerman. How does DISA evaluate new innovations from industry? Uh, it could be several different methods. Um, it, it could, one thing that this group, that uh, Steve's group will be doing is doing research. Uh, so they may run across a, a, what seems to be a very uh, uh, genuine uh, idea, to something that could be useful in the future for us. Um, it could be their discussions in professional forums, whether they're going to conferences or things like that. Or it could simply be one of you all coming in and saying, I have this idea that uh, we think it may be useful. Um, we would go through di different process. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about OTAs this morning. We're, we're going to use any kind of contracting solution uh, as we go forward as long as it, it suits the purposes of what uh, Steve's group is going to be concentrating on. So um, just like within the past, we will, anything that we believe that is innovative and can suit, suit our purposes and can show something very quick. This is not going to be a skunk works kind of thing where we're sitting and trying to figure out something for four, five, six years. This would be as as I've said and the Admiral said and Mr. Montemorano, this is going to be something of quick turnover. So we will evaluate um, ideas on the, the surface and the technical um, capabilities it could provide in a very quick manner. Could you please repeat your best estimate of when the NBIS responsibilities will transfer to DSS? 
best estimate will be uh, beginning of FY20. Um, so October 1st of FY20. But as the Admiral mentioned this morning, Mr. Carpenter will be with us uh, for the foreseeable future as the transition happens, but we believe he'll be with uh, DISA at least to the end of this fiscal year. 